howdy -o, everyone! Lassity here, back in action for more uh, terror attraction. That's right, we're gonna actually try a terror list today. Because, haha, spoopy month. And I figured it'd be something that I kind of just got into. For those that are just checking this out on the Fake Go side of things, I have been playing, playing Fake Go for roughly a year or so. Um, if not a year, then maybe a few extra days or some such. So, not everything that I say can be very well adjusted to an experienced master. But I will say that I know something about micromanaging because of all the games I play. <laughs> so, the first one up is uh, Mona Lisa. Now, the Mona Lisa is one of the very first ones. Actually, a really good QP uh, game by 10% when you MLB it. Not so good at 2%. It's uh, here or there on that situation. Obviously, it could still be good. You know, C's just having mixed things. Not always a particularly fun bit. But, uh, in terms of things, it's gonna be an A for me. A lot of the big reasons why I don't think the CE is particularly great compared to other CEs is simply the fact that we have things like the Brave one, uh, where we have this uh, three-star CE that you can plop in any team comp and it'll be fine, it won't take up too much space. And you get 221 CE or 220, depending on what the year is, etc. etc. If you MLB it, you can get a little bit extra things that doesn't really matter, but you know, it, it's something that like I look at and it's just kind of like you're gonna get QP anyway through various things, if not from this CE, from maybe like uh just burning things from the gotcha or from doing things like going to events and kind of just burning those things at the event stores and getting that or even certain events popping up and just being there to actually give you uh extra qp and whatnot it's not really a matter that it's not a good ce i think um <laughs> What was it called again? The Mona Lisa. I do think the Mona Lisa is a good one. I do plan to eventually get it. But I think another thing a lot of players don't seem to remember when they are younger masters is rare prisms and, and getting a bunch of mana prisms to actually get them from the shop is a hard thing to do. And I wouldn't recommend anybody starting out to get this CE. Starting out nowadays in Fate Go, uh, I'm not so sure if everyone really knows this or not, but it's pretty good in terms of giving you enough resources to do things. You get a lot of QP, you get a lot of uh, like, a, like XP cards and various things like that to really get you started and going. So you're not going to be hurting for QP yet. That's going to be something that probably hits maybe like two years in or so or some such, unless you're really bad at, at doing skill stuff. And that's why I really feel like you can't just be like it gets you qp it's good it's it's only good at a certain point in time and even then there is a better qp ce for this that you can get and there's various other things that you get to to get it but suffice to say there's too many places that you get qp for it to be worthwhile immediately it's not something that i think everyone rightly needs immediately and that's what i feel like ex is supposed to be a is definitely, like, if you get it, you're stronger for it, but EX is not. EX is something that you should be striving to get, as far as I'm concerned. With that going ahead, uh, we're going to go and look at personal training. Personal training increase mastery EXP gain by 10% uh, when it's MLB, 2% when it's not, uh, mixed stats, so it's kind of like here or there. But... <sighs> The thing to me with um, Master uh, XP is you're always going to get it. And I do need to express that wholeheartedly. This is good when like levels are raised or you're trying to like get up higher. I noticed that once I hit around 130 on my level, suddenly I wasn't getting my levels as much, but I do eventually get them. And it's not like I'm really like hurting to like do more things every given time and whatnot. And once you're around uh, 130, 
more like 120 honestly on the levels you're pretty fine in terms of like what you could put in together so it's not even good for that in particular and on top of that they have adjusted things so you don't have to worry so much about sizing when you're leveling up so it lost a lot of purpose in that regard and a lot of other regards but i do think it's still a good ce in the sense that like if you really wanted to get more levels if you had nothing else to, like really go do or like they raise levels particularly higher and you want to grind for it i do think it has a niche out there and that's why i kind of think it's fairly average on the whole entire bit because it is still one of the best ce's that we could use for master exp but it's not something that i think everyone rightly should go out and get it's it's one of those situations where it's like I'm, I'm doing this in a very niche part of things and i don't need to like worry about it so much aside from that we also got another one personal lesson uh increase mystic code exp gained by two percent and then uh ten percent when it's mlb'd mm, actually all attack that's pretty interesting that's all attack well nice little thing there at least and obviously with all these ce's you don't want to like max them out or anything at least comparatively to anything else but I, I do find that mystic coding is a far better option because you just uh have a certain amount of time with any given mystic code you'll be using various other ones or you'll find one that you really like and you'll use that for your competitive comp or your uh your your bosses and whatnot so it's not always there and it's not like getting to other levels higher than five isn't a big deal like i'm pretty sure you get every ce to level five pretty easily so you don't need to worry about levels with mystic coding as much um and in particular the reason why i'm getting so into it is because of the value of what the card actually holds and as much as I like Mystic Codes and like leveling them up, it's just more of a personal reason for me on why I like to do that. Uh, consider it something uh, akin to OCD, the lesser version of it, where just I kind of get like little on my brain when I don't have something that's like completely leveled. <laughs> and I like, I want to grind it out. That's just something that I want to do personally, but it's not something that hurts the overall thing. Most of the things that you get from level leveling your your mystic codes are literally just cooldowns so very few mystic codes actually benefit from this to begin with on top of that you know you're just not going to need it as much not not concentrated like this we're just getting mystic codes so again <laughs> it is a c it's average there is reasoning for it there absolutely is especially when it gives to certain things but it's just on a very niche level that it doesn't matter as much trust me these things will go down faster as i explain all the little resource management but we do need to talk about it uh, another thing in particular is shadell lunchtime two percent for nine and then ten percent for the full it has full uh, no it has attack and and hp so it's okay here there on the whole entire mix thatch, but uh, let's say it right now. Bonding? Absolutely the most important. The most important thing you could do with this entire little thing right here. There, there's several reasons why that is, but it mostly just pertains to sync quartz. But if you're just starting the game, it is a good idea to actually get your bonds up all the way because of solomon solomon is a singularity that uses your bonds to actually do attacking and whatnot on top of that with the recent update for na uh as well as jp for like a long time has been you get uh, servant coins with this as well and for servant coins you you need for a certain amount of thing mainly your five stars if you ever get like a, a ssr you could very easily get at least one append skill and those append skills while not great <laughs> they, they are something that could help your servant be faster at doing what it needs to do 
And because of that, it kind of feeds into the system of you're making your servants better by doing this. You're making a certain singularity that you're doing better for this. And the rewards that you get for each bond after five are actually pretty good. From anywhere from golden apples just to getting another sync quartz or a bunch of sync quartz. I think that's pretty awesome and something that feeds into the whole entire system together. So absolutely, I think bonding is the hardest thing that you need to grind out for, while at the same time something that I think every player should strive to do at a passive level. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't get the CE if it's that helpful, especially at a 10%. A 2% value, there's definitely better CE, so if you only have one, it's not going to be the best out there for you. It is still better than most CEs uh, when they're not MLB'd. But as is, as that MLB 10%, it's still pretty freaking amazing. And something that can really help with a lot of events too, uh, as you're grinding for bond points and whatnot, and just getting the maximum amount of servant stuff, uh, even including just the little uh, strength ups that you get from interludes. But yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to be had with bond. Uh, and then this one right here, another mystic code. Uh, be graceful. Uh, we got a 15% on MLB, 5% if you're not using it uh, as a friend support. This, I don't really think it's worth it. There could be one or two of them out there to like really give you something. But if you were to ask me, I don't think you'd really get that niche in at any point in time compared to various other things. There's just too many things out there that make it not work. Mainly that, why wouldn't you just use this one instead of this one? That's my main problem with it. It already has something that, like, they're gonna use for it, and your friends and uh, fellow masters and anybody else in between the two aren't gonna really care for this as much. They're, they're gonna see it and be like, Okay, um, I guess I could use this. I could use it one time. It'll be okay. But it's just not worth it. <laughs> You're only going to get so many friend points out of the whole situation, and there are far better ones to get for friend point stuff. Still, let's look at Chanel Tea Time. We have an increased bond uh, points by 5%, and then 15% if it's a friend thing. Another yix. Come on. Come on. This is a pretty simple one right here. And the reason for that being is that it is the highest one that you can get and use via friend points. 50% is like no slouch either. It will help immensely in your grind. And while I don't think everyone would have this and, and outright, it is definitely something that like Bond is always on the back of every master's mind that they want to do. So. It's absolutely something that I think should be used more by more masters if they get it, and something that you should look out for if you don't have anything else to particularly grind for. So it's just, it's very helpful, you know? <laughs> As for this next one, uh, the Bella Lisa. Now this one right here, as much as I, I did talk about the whole entire QP thing, this is the one that is the best. It is absolutely positively the best QP uh, game to get, mainly because you don't have to have it. That is the biggest reason why. A lot of times when you're really hurting for QP, you're going to be going and using the, the treasure, uh, what's it called? Treasure? I legitimately don't know why I forgot what a treasure vault was. My bad! <laughs> But you're going to be using something like a treasure vault, or you're going to be doing an event that has QP that you're going to be gaining even more so. And QP is one of those things that is just kind of a chore resource. It just kind of is. Uh, even more so than anything else out there, because like you do want to spend it to actually get more things and whatnot. But it's, it's not something that I think needs to be had at all times, but something that should be earned passively and bella lisa helps out the most passively so because you don't even need to have the ce if you do have the ce 
it's great for friend point stuff, especially when there's ever QP going up, or it's great to use on various caster support, very supports, not just casters. I'm thinking of Castoria here. Um, and just like any kind of rider that was really good at their job at the treasure vault, that's all you really need for it. So it's absolutely something that will get you friend points as well, and that is a valuable resource. Okay, personal coaching. Increase Master XP by 1%, then 5%, and then MLB'd. If it's by a friend of support, 15%. I am not a fan of this at all. I, I, I think it has lesser value than this one does. Then be careful. Free grace for whatever. I don't think it is a good CE, mainly because you just have the Master XP via here where you get it passively with other ce's with this one you're just giving it to friends and it doesn't make sense here i do consider it to be a lesser value because it doesn't even have a niche it just doesn't not a lot of people are going to go out and be like i really need this they're going to go out and be like oh they have bella lisa i'm going to use that one they're just not going to really go for the other ones that's something that really needs to be acknowledged as a whole but sadly, that's just how it be. Now this one, however, Detective Fomus. Oh, this this is, I think, just dazzling. Pulls a max attack. You got a QP gain and a bond gain. Both something that you should be working on passively. And if you MLB it, it's 5% each. This, I honestly do think, is EX. It is something that I am personally saving for and getting as my first actual one and something that I consider to be absolutely something that I think any master should have in terms of passively getting things. There's just something about getting extra QP while also getting bond points at the same time that just looks incredibly well with each other while also um, just kind of maximizing all potential. Uh, if you're going to be doing, like, multiple things at once, you might as well have it as Detective Fomus. It makes the most sense to be gaining QP and to be gaining uh, bond points over almost anything else, really. The only one other thing that I think works out in particularly well, and uh, we still haven't gotten to that particular one, but let's get to the first actual CE that I have gotten for the Da Vinci Shop. And that is Shadell, Shadell Dinner Time. Increase bond, ex, uh, increase bond points by 1%, Master EXP by 1%. As max HP, actually pretty good for a stall team if you really need it. You got that random, I don't know, let's say, Anger Mine You that you use at the very end of your things, like me, who has like no HP. It could be useful. He has pull for me sometimes. But I get it. Attack is obviously the better of the bunch. Still, you could help on, on small little things, at least comparatively so, to just having a mixed sort of stat thing. Just not bringing out the full gains. Uh, point being, bond point, one of the best things out there. It just is. If you have bond points as your CE, you get an extra bump uh, the way that I figure it. And like I said before, the Master XP gain is fine, but I don't think you should be using it as a main thing, as a driving force. And the fact that this has bonding points uh, just kind of increases the significance of it. And the other CE that I also have that does the same thing, uh, Grand Cavalo, does the same thing but with Mystic Codes. Also, mixed stats kind of makes it worse, but Mystic Codes in particular are very important to get as a niche, and I would consider this to be better than this one right here. This is obviously the more niche of the bunch because you'll always be gaining Master XP, and there's just always a proper slot for this, but this one right here, um, just kind of a better passive gain as a whole. With these gains, you want to be getting things that are hard to acquire without focusing on it. You want to gain it as a passive thing. 
I want to establish this wholeheartedly. You want a passive gain. You don't want to have to worry about actively going out and getting them. So, like, if we're talking about QP health, we're talking about all that, no, it's not what we want. We want something that would help a newer player play the game just however they would, and they just stick the CE in and they don't have to worry about nothing else. That's what we want. And so far, everything from being up works that way. C is something that's kind of like, I need to address this immediately. Uh, but it's not something that is needed at all times. Next up, we do have a free seating. I'm not a big fan of this one. I honestly don't really know what I want from it because it does have that QP gain of 5%. And the QP gain of 5% is a good thing, as well as the Mystic Code, too, uh, being 5%. These are nice gains, and it does have max attack. These are all good things that we have here. But, if I'm going to be real, I don't think this is the best thing that you could use for it. I just don't see QP, or what was it again, or Mystic Code stuff being that necessary comparatively to bond bonding is is just something that i feel is far more needed than either of the two resources that you're getting despite the fact that qp is so abundant uh, elsewhere and is needed in everything uh there's just something about uh this one in particular that i'm just not a very big fan of comparatively so it's still a good ce I don't think you're going wrong with it, per se. You definitely have more uses for it than these two. But as a passive gain, I don't think it's worth it overall. I think you're better off with any of these, comparatively so. And uh, this Curse CE right here, Idolmaker. Uh, no, I think it's actively worse. I think it is, by and large, not a good CE. Uh, simply for the fact that... If you wanted to gain more Mystic Coding, or you wanted to gain more e Master EXP, you should use one of these. If you want to do something passive with one or the other, you have these to work with. And you're still gaining Bond. But you don't need to do both. That's just something that you don't have to do. Even as a newcomer, you don't have to do that. You should be working on your Bonding uh, more, or you should be working on your Friend Points more. Uh, just Or your QP, even. That would also work out better but mystic code and master thing no you don't need that that's not going to help with your overall resources now take romance qp and master exp uh gained by five percent one percent if it's not an old beat and i got mixed stats yeah pretty much the same thing anything that gives you qp i do feel is something that you can use and, like, I do want to kind of put it in D tier in the sense that I would never pick it over, over these. But it is better objective than these. You, you do have a niche for it. You do have something there, uh, especially if there's an event that's specifically for QP farming. It could really help out and work for you and actually even take you more about it because you're getting the Master XP for it. Same thing with this, really, but just the Mystico thing, right? Is that right? Yep, yeah, Mystico. They're all fairly familiar in the whole situation and whatnot. Now, I think this is the start of a, a new thing right here. The the Beyond the Rain Cloud. Increase friend points uh, when using a friend support by 5, and then Mystico by 1%, and then if it's MLB, 5% for both. Uh, like I said before, uh, it, it, it's diving into a resource that's actually pretty valuable while also giving something pretty good with this. I think it's a pretty good CE. You, could, you couldn't really go too wrong with it. If I'm reading this correctly on the Beyond the Rain Cloud, you just need to be using a friend support. So it doesn't need to be specifically about... Uh, like on the friend itself. So it should be fine. And that 25 stackable does pretty well on things. 
I do think if you're getting friend points, uh, it's better to get uh, the art cards, which I, I don't have right handily, but I'll edit it in, is just those little art cards that have like nice little pictures on it and they give you 25 friend points and they're four star. Uh, this is the only real reason why I would kind of not use it over these two. Uh, mind you that all of these, consider them the same rank. EX, everything's EX here. A, everything's A rank there. They're all, they're all flat out the same thing. And while I don't think I would personally get this, uh, there is something there for it with friend points. Friend points are also incredibly valuable and something that is akin to how bond points are in terms of uh, you want to get as much as possible because of various things like uh, Odo Nobunaga or just being able to get more CE uh, things to it or even just trying to summon those really hard servants like Saber Lily and uh, Angermine you. <laughs> The next one here, Beyond the Night. I don't know why they decided to make both CEs so close to each other. Have Beyond in the title. I feel it's a little bit uh, odd to do. But uh, this is uh, 25 for friend points on MLB. And then bond points at 5%. And as max HP. Actually, incredibly high max HP if I'm, I'm looking at that right. No, it's probably the same. And do you, you want to know where it goes? That's right, in the EX tier. This is easily the best of both worlds right here and something that I really hope to get as soon as I can because I love getting the best of both worlds here. Absolutely, positively, 100%. Getting FP and, uh, and bond points at the same time, pretty fantastic. The 5% works out so incredibly well. Uh, for the overall gains and just it's gonna work out really great there's just nothing more to say about this this just gives you two valuable resources at a very good rate and that's something that you want and list into the ethereal avail this is qp gain and friend support as much as i do like this one too because it is a friend support game uh it does have mixed attacks so it's kind of eh on the whole situation. And overall, I do think there are better QP things to gain, but they're better than these. I would absolutely get this. I would tell anybody to just rightly get this. Getting friend points is just always a good bet on top of the fact that you're getting QP, a resource that you always need. It's fantastic, really. So there's no reason not to kind of gain this. Absolutely fantastic CE as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I love the art for this one. Seeking the end of eternity. Uh, increase friend points and master EXP. 25% stackable EXP gain by 5%. All attack. Pretty neat. I'm not so much a fan of this one. I am not. But I do think that's fairly decent. It's just the Master XP that I don't think works for it very well. And I think is the major problem with this. The Master XP just isn't something that you need. You're always, I mean always, going to get Master EXP. No matter how passively or unpassively you do it, you're just always going to gain it. This isn't the same way with Mystic Codes, which I believe Yon does? Yeah, Mystic Codes. Um, it, this just has a more, like, present niche thing. And when you're trying to passively farm for things, or you're trying to min-max your situation, you don't want to go for something that you're always going to be gaining on. You want to go for something that you can't always gain on, or has a more definite amount. That's what you want. With, uh, experience, it's just it's never that way. You're always going to gain experience. There's not a reason to speed up that process. So, C tier. <laughs> okay, the wolf story. Very interesting CE. Got a full max attack. Pretty neat. But this, I feel, is a CE gone wrong too fast. Uh, it has a neat idea of having this be three different things at once. 
And while these are all good things that you should need, that 25 friend support, the 2.5 uh, gain, that 2.5 gain for bond and QP, it's not good. And having it not on B is just worse. You're just not doing good. And I'm going to be real here. Those CEs that I showed where it's just the illustration and just has that 25 gain that's stackable, you would just use those if you wanted this. If you wanted to gain more FP. If you wanted to do that. So this actually isn't good at all. That 2.5% just isn't enough to like really make somebody out there use it enough. That's that's specifically the problem is that you're you're not gaining enough to always have it. You will have to always have the CE in in order to gain any kind of benefit from it. And Fate Grand Order as a game isn't like that. It's gonna want you to change CEs constantly and do various things. Uh, if only for the fact that there's boss battles and you need to be a little more serious. So in that regard, I don't think it's good at all. Like, I just straight up being having to spend 5,000 mana prisms just to get it to MLB is confusing because all these other CEs, and I do mean all these other CEs, will gain you more. And you just won't be able to have this at the very beginning or any other point since. And that's why we actually have to add a terror, because it actually is just that bad. Every other CE here, even if this sucks, it's a bad CE, this fails at what it's supposed to be doing. It's bad. If you want to get anything else here, this isn't worth your time. You have other CEs that do better jobs give you that 5%, which is more than what any of just two of these battles would do. You would gain more by that 5% on either given side, comparatively to that friend point gain that you just got. You could just add that four star 25 gain on top of whatever these are. That's, that's how much easier it would just be to do. And it's sad because I get what they're trying to do here, but even if it was just 3%, it would have worked. Because 3% is a is a proper gain. It's it's properly there to actually do something. But at 2.5%, that's not something that I think I could be justified. It's just not something that really works out better because like, why wouldn't you use just one of the New Year CE along with the friend point gain and like, the bond support like why wouldn't you just do that why don't you just use this it, it doesn't make sense <laughs> make it make sense now sadly we have rising against the azura sky which does the same thing but with master exp and bond points and while bond points are great and everything it's just not enough to save the ce it's not enough gain and it fails at that particular moment, too. But, not to, like, have everything on a downer here in terms of the CEs that we're going to eventually get. I do think that Before the Daybreak is a good CE. And we're talking about non MLB, it's still a pretty good CE. That 10 stackable is still pretty good. Especially if you don't have those uh, little uh, CEs that are just, like, illustrations. But uh, that 50 stackable... Pretty neat, pretty pretty nice. You're able to get more of these, especially if um it's just like you have a friend support that also has that, that's a hundred additional on top of whatchamacalls, one, two, then you would probably have three more. Oh yeah, four more. So you could just effectively get 300 FP just by this alone. This works out pretty freaking well. I generally do think, even if it's just like, it has to be on the friend support, I do think it works out really well. 
if it works out in the friend support area where it just it has to be on a friend support, then yeah, I do think it's B. But if you're able to use it otherwise, I do think it works out better this way. And the only reason why I say that is because it's the highest FP game out there. Um, and that just like really helps with a lot of like preparing for any FP pool and whatnot and doing all that situation. But this is it. This is the whole tier list, everybody. Um, so sadly, because this is my video, it means I'm right and can ar cannot argue with me. But if you think you can, you can do that in the comments wholeheartedly. I get it. It's futile, but I get it. But suffice to say, I, I do think overall the majority of these CEs are good. These are the only ones that are bad. O only the F tier is the bad ones. And it's really sad. And while I would like to see more, like, friend support stuff that does really kooky and weird stuff for that, it just doesn't work so well uh, when it's just... It's, it's just the, the master support or it's just the, the mystic coding and whatnot. And it's, just, it's a little bit sad in that regard. They're not always going to need that as a master, but you will need bond points, you will need QP, and you will need friend points. These are all things that we need as masters. And with that being said, thank you all for watching. I shall see you all next time for another terror list. Maybe. I don't know. I have a lot of stuff that I want to do with Fate Go, to be honest. A lot of stuff I want to do with terror list, too. Till then. Bye, Nara. Bye, bye.